Good afternoon. My name is Frederick Taggart and this is a golfer's walk. Today, I'm going to play in the rain. It's actually really starting to rain hard. Hi. The wind is blowing too. So, playing in the rain is really pretty much about mentality and being prepared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover a few of the things that I do to make sure that I'm prepared and really it's about being comfortable. If you're not comfortable, it's hard to play well. And the other part is the mentality, the approach that you have to have. You know, Jack Nicklaus used to always love when people would talk about, you know, the weather that it was going to be raining or cold or windy or whatever because he knew that he already had a major advantage over everybody else because of their mentality, because of the way that they viewed it. You have to look forward to playing in the wet rain. I always do. Uh, when I was uh, in college, one of my coaches always said that if it's raining, it's a good day to play. If it's sunny out, you could, it's a good day to practice. Because the reality is that if you can play in the rain, then you can certainly play in the sun. And if you're gonna play competitive golf, if you're gonna play tournament golf, you're going to play in the rain. So how do you handle it? What are the things that you need to do? Cover those. So the first thing that you need to make sure you have is some basic rain gear. Um, I think everybody knows about rain suits, but the rain suits really do vary uh, of what's available out there. If you're going to play and you think you play a fair amount in the rain, especially in the cold, uh, then I would really recommend investing in a good rain suit. Uh, today I'm wearing <clears throat> a rain suit that's manufactured by uh, Tylus Footjoy and it includes a jacket as well as the rain pants. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about these. Um, at the end of the video, when I take them off, I can show you a little bit more. But uh, one of the really cool things that you can kind of see now is, is that the rain jacket, while it has long sleeves, the sleeves actually unzip to make it short sleeves. So if it's not cool out or cold out, um, it uh, used to always be a problem because the rain jackets used to always be long sleeve and when it was warm or hot out, it would always get unbearable to wear. So these sleeves actually kind of come apart right here. And uh, you'll see that better afterwards. The other part is, is that you do need to know what the temperature is going to be. You know, playing in cool weather in the rain, like right now it's 43 degrees, um, is completely different than trying to play in the middle of summer and it's 85. Um, because the rain uh, just makes the cold much, much worse. So today I'm actually wearing four layers. I have a golf shirt, I have a sweater, um, a relatively thin-ish, not a heavy-duty sweater, but a golf sweater, and then I have a light cover over that before I have on my rain jacket. And that really just gives me layers to stay warm but not get too bulky. Um, the rain pants I have on uh, today, I didn't wear the long johns, but uh, which I probably should have. I'm okay with being warm, um, but right now it's just my pants and the rain pants. So after you have your rain suit, probably the next most important thing, actually could be the most important thing to have, are a really good pair of rain gloves. So I learned this lesson the hard way a long time ago when I first turned pro. I was playing in a qualifier with Greg Lesher out at uh, uh, somewhere in Pittsburgh for the uh, Quicksilver Open and it was a Monday qualifier and Monday qualifiers usually don't get rained out regardless of how much rain there may be because you really can't put it off you got to get the qualifiers lined up for the tournament so the golf course was unplayable there were actually huge rivers cutting through the fairways and 
played with Greg and there was water on a lot of the greens and it was just really really tough round to give you an idea of how tough all you had to do was break 80 to qualify to play in the uh, back then it was the Hogan Tour uh, tournament event or the web.com equivalent to web.com it was really hard but Greg he managed to be swinging away all day long even though it was pouring down rain which was amazing because none of us could hold on to our clubs very well and back then you don't have quite the technology of today but back then they used um, lambskin gloves and grips and if you put the two of them together even soaking wet it's just like it just the glove just sucked right onto the grip and he was, I believe he was a low qualifier. I think somehow he shot one over par that day, which was, I believe, a low, which was amazing. So it's something that you definitely have to invest in because if you can't hold on to the club, you're just not going to be able to play very well. Makes it not very fun. So definitely check them out. I'm going to list the ones that I used down below. And at the end of the video, I'll probably show you a close-up for these as well. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in, uh, in the gloves that I have. Right down the middle. So what else? What else do you need equipment-wise? Well. There's a few more things actually. The next thing is it's probably your umbrella. The golf umbrella a lot of times is really not looked at carefully enough. Um, one of the uh, important things is the size of the umbrella. Uh, you definitely want a large umbrella for golf for a couple reasons. One, you want to make sure that you can cover your bag and yourself, especially while you're walking. I'll get to the bag in just a minute, but in the summertime, uh, it can actually get quite hot and, and uh, stuffy, and you might actually want a lot of airflow. So this particular umbrella uh, I have here from Titleist has some air vents. You can see them popping up and down. Actually, it actually allows the air to flow. It actually allows air to flow out and keeps air circulation up in there. So why is that really important? Well, there are a number of tricks to try and keeping everything dry. Uh, and I'm going to go over those uh, a little bit later. One of them is something as simple as this. It's how you hold your club and keep it dry. The grips. you got to try and keep the grips dry. The drier you keep them, the better off you'll be, even with the rain gloves. So I'm not sure if you noticed, but what I did there, I actually turned my bag. So when you put your umbrella, when you have an umbrella out, here, let me clean this. When you have an umbrella and you put it in your bag you're gonna have to make sure that you always lean it into the wind otherwise the umbrella becomes a big sail and just wants to lift right out just like that so what else well a towel not just dry your camera off, but keep your hands dry. Might be to wipe your arms off uh, if they're wet in the rain. Wipe down the grips or the shafts of the clubs. Uh, another good thing is there are covers that you can put over your the top of your bag. I'll show you some of those uh, at the end when I get back in. But today I didn't feel that it was necessary. So especially uh, since I'm carrying a bag, if I had a caddy, I'd probably 
would want to use it because right now I'm going to be putting my umbrella on the bag each time. But if I had a caddy, I'd be carrying the umbrella more with me. So. So if you get a chance to take a caddy when you're training, do it. A good caddy is worth double the money on days like this. All right, so what else? What is some of the other equipment that is important? Well, one of them is sort of on my head, and that's a hat. Um, now, the hat I have is kind of a typical golf hat, and it does okay as long as the rain is kind of light. It's gotten a little heavier and a lot colder since we started, so, what I really should have on is my rain hat. Rain hat is made of the same kind of material that the, the rain suit is. And hold on a minute. The reason why that's important is because if you're going to be out in the rain an hour, two, four, then a hat like what I'm wearing right now is simply just going to get soaked. It means your head's going to get soaked. And probably the biggest problem with that is, is that the bill of the hat will get absolutely saturated. And when that occurs, when you go to bend your head over, it seems to be more with putting than it is with the other shots. But as you go to bend your head over, water just keeps running right off of it. It can be very distracting. So a rain hat, which I'll show right here, just allows the water to run off of the hat. Actually will extend back so it's like a rim on the back side as well and that will allow the water to roll off the back and not down your neck as this one would. All right, so kind of found one of my favorite positions to miss on this hole, but luckily I have a lot of practice missing to the left and I can hit a stinger hook almost as good as the real Zach Radford. Worked out pretty well. Hooked a wee bit sooner than I wanted, but still cleared the tree. Oh. It's starting to get serious out here. It's actually really starting to rain hard. Aye. And the wind is blowing too. It's still fun. Fun to see what you can do. Can't take it too serious. There it is. Beautiful par five here. Good go for it kind of hole, risk reward. Well, there's the 100 plate, so probably got about 100 to the hole.
in. Wouldn't be the first time I made birdie from the trees. Won't be the last either. All right. That's really close. Actually getting closer the closer I get. Here's some strategy stuff. Now that shot was only a hundred yards to the hole. And normally I would hit a pitching wedge about 125 to 130 yards. Now it's about 40 degrees now and it's very humid with all this rain and it's raining and it's cold and I uh, which means that you're not as loose I have four layers on and trying to swing full can be well much more difficult than it needs to be and this is where you have to learn to flight shots flighting really meaning taking one club more and not swinging as hard or as big in this case I know how far I hit my three-quarter wedge swing and for me that's about 110 115 but in these conditions I figured it was going to be at least 10 yards less probably and given the fact that there are bunkers short I decided that you know being a little bit long is okay being a little bit short is not okay trying to muscle something up there is really not necessary and this ball actually sat and spun um, even though it wasn't a full shot I'm not sure I really need to put this do I pin in foot wedge yay really raining so something else to keep in mind is that if you were watching the Phoenix Open uh, this past year uh, and that was the one where Ricky Fowler won remember back on I believe it was hole 11 where he was short of the green and it was pouring down rain and he hit a little chip shot onto the green little pitch shot it skidded and went over the green and into the water and that's where he had placed the ball and then it rolled into the hazard afterwards and got penalized again. Comment down below what you think of that ruling. USGA knows what I think of it. But what really happened there was that I think that Ricky had forgotten or didn't realize the amount of rain that had come down actually created quite a bit of water that was kind of on the green. And so when he hit his pitch shot in, the ball kind of hydroplaned or skidded along the grass um, instead of biting into it and that's why it went as long as it did. You have to keep this in mind with many of the shots that are coming into the green, especially those that are coming in at a lower angle. Um, the ball is simply not going to grab the same. It is definitely going to skid and, and, uh, and release a lot more. So it's probably, for most people, it's probably something that you need to keep in mind more when you're hitting shots around the green especially chip shots with that have a little bit of pace to them don't expect them to check up like they did uh, maybe earlier when it was dry out the ball is definitely going to skid when the greens get very wet so another piece of equipment that's very very important is the golf bag itself this bag here I got well that's not a good idea this golf bag I got right here I got because as it says it's a stay dry bag so stay dry meaning that it's actually a waterproof bag the zippers are specially designed the material that's there the bottom of the bag everything that's gone into this they made sure that it was waterproof many bags are not waterproof and so when it starts to rain they just get saturated it causes a lot of problems if you're carrying your own bag it's going to get really heavy 
Um, you know how much if you took a pair of jeans and put them in the washer and then you go to put them in the dryer, they're like really heavy. I mean, really heavy. And <clears throat> your golf bag will do the same thing. Um, head covers, same deal. Uh, if you get cloth type head covers, those things are going to get soaked and heavy and miserable to handle. Um, these type of head covers, you can see it just beads up on it. You definitely, definitely need to keep that in mind. You want to keep, you want a bag that keeps your stuff dry. So if you're going to play competitive, you really need to look into getting a, a bag that is, uh, that will keep everything waterproof. It'll keep your gloves inside dry. It'll keep your towels that are inside dry. It keeps everything dry. Keep your money inside dry, your watch. Um, but most importantly, it won't let the water soak in and then start to puddle down at the bottom of the bag where the grips would be and get wet. All right, well, I was going to play nine, but I'm going to cut it off at three holes. It's getting pretty, pretty cold out here, and uh, my back is getting tense and can't risk injury. I got to play the next two days, so. I'm going to play this last hole, number 18. It's a par 3. Pretty long hole today. 200 yards from back here. Straight back to the clubhouse. Actually, longer than 200 pins. Way back in the green. Probably going to play about 220. Good shot. Right at it. Thought it was going to be a little closer. On the green. Well, it's a long ways. Not a good way to finish, but not a big deal. All right, well, we're done with that. I'll be with you in just a minute. I'll show you a little bit about uh, some additional steps that you cannot forget about, as well as a little bit more about the uh, what I'm wearing.